think this might be a kind of restful section for most of you. We're just going to draw some graphs. In particular, we're going to ask the question, if we know what the graph of f of x looks like, then what happens to the graph if we add or subtract a number to it? What happens to the graph if we have addition or subtraction in the parentheses? And finally, what happens to the graph if we multiply it by a number? And we'll see some pretty basic applications of this stuff as well. But um, let's start. by investigating vertical shifts. And because most of this lesson is just going to be messing around with graphs without any real uh, motivation behind it, let's start with some kind of motivation. I'm, so, sorry. I'm sorry, Dr. Moses, can you go back to the first screen real quick? Does that mean infinity downer? Oh, um, sorry. That's a Greek letter. I just mean a constant. Oh, okay. Let me, let me write that down real quick. Sorry. <coughs> so it just means like a constant? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if any of you or most of you were in Chadron last winter. It wasn't a super bad winter overall, but let's say we're looking at the temperature that a building is kept at. So over the night, that is to say in the early morning, and in the late evening, the building is just kept warm enough to keep the pipes from freezing. And then in the part of the day where people are around, of course, houses and businesses and stuff are kept warmer. Well, last winter, all of us who were in Chadron, at least all of the, us who were with my electric company, got an email saying, hey, if you don't stop using electricity the way people are using electricity, we're just going to completely lose power. So we were asked to keep buildings on the campus in our apartments at a cooler temperature than we had been. So one way to do that would be to just take the temperature graph and shove it downwards so that you have the same shape but now it's in a different part of the Cartesian plane. It's lower than before. And this is an example of a vertical shift. A vertical shift is sort of, as its name implies, it's what happens when you take a graph and you push that graph up or you push that graph down. So you shift its location vertically. In terms of mathematical symbols, vertical shifts occur when we have our function and we add or subtract something. 
thing to it. So that's because my ability to draw nice graphs is extremely limited. Let's go to Desmos and let's create a function. And I'm just going to create a function at random. This isn't the heat example, but maybe something like, like this. And let's maybe change its color so it's a little more visible. Here is a function f of x. The the details of the function, all this stuff I just highlighted, don't really matter for our purposes. We have a curve, and we're investigating how we can shift this curve vertically up or down, and we do so via addition or subtract. So here's f of x in blue and f of x plus 3 in red. And you notice that this curve and this curve are the same shape. If I went here and turned everything off, then, and I made these Come on, Desmos, there we go. And I made these the same color. This curve and this curve are indistinguishable from one another. The only difference is where they're located on the Cartesian plane. One of them is above the other. Let me get off of this back again. So I feel like maybe I changed colors accidentally. Maybe I reversed them. But this thing in blue is the original function. And this thing in red is the original function plus three. And its graph is this graph shifted up. And you probably won't be surprised to hear if we look at this point, 3.866, and we look at this point, 0 0.866, this point got shifted three units up, corresponding to that plus three. So if we want to shift a curve up by so many units, we add that many units to the function. Let's write that down. If we've got addition, the curve gets pushed up by k Let's put a space between my words and letters there it gets pushed up by k units and you can probably sort of intuit what subtract would do. Subtraction is going to push the curve down by that many units. So if instead of f of x plus 3, I have f of x minus 3, you see that curve gets pushed down. And we can also see this, let's use a feature of Desmos, so here's, in red, is f of x plus 10 plus 4.6 plus 
one plus point two. We're about to get into the negatives, and now instead of being above it, we'll be below it. F of x minus two, or minus 1.8. F of x minus 2.3, minus 5.7, and so on. So the shape of this graph, is it changing? It's just being pushed up or down according to the size of k and according to whether k is positive or negative. And that's the concept of a vertical shift. We can have a vertical shift up and a vertical shift down. Me. I guess I used the precise phrase vertical shift there, but let me sort of finish these notes out. These two things, addition and subtraction, are collected known as vertical shifts. And because I keep insisting on using that word vertical, what happens next might not be, thank you, what happens next might not be a huge surprise, Next, we'll talk about horizontal shifts. And horizontal shifts are slightly more complicated because horizontal shifts are compositions. For a horizontal shift, we're going to take the function and we're going to stick something inside of it. And what we stick inside of it is not going to be very complicated. It's going to be x plus a number or x minus a number. But vertical shifts are, I've always thought, kind of unintuitive in another way as well. Because, look, you have the Cartesian plane. You have your x-axis and your y-axis. And for the x-axis, we have a positive and a negative direction. And for the y-axis, we have a positive and a negative direction. And this seems to me very intuitive that addition shifts in the positive direction and subtraction shifts in the negative direction. However, horizontal shifts work in the opposite way from that. If we have addition inside the parentheses, that's a shift in the negative direction. Towards the left. And it's subtraction that shifts in the positive direction towards the right. Let's verify this. Let's take a look. 
we can keep this function, but now we'll put this k inside of the parentheses. So let me see if I can get this to zero. So here's the unshifted function. If I make k be positive, so this is addition, that's going to shift the curve, the red curve, to the left. Let's see. As I say, making k positive shifts the red curve left. If instead, let's default back to zero, if I make this negative so that we have subtraction, that's going to push the red curve to the right, to the positive direction. And indeed, it does. And just with as with vertical shifts, K is controlling how far we move. So here, X is 0.5. This sort of vertex goes two units right to 2.5. And that two corresponds to the two inside the parentheses. We can, well, let's write everything down as we go. I guess I basically have this written down. Let's make explicit what I just said, that this is by k units. And let me now make the observation that we can combine vertical and horizontal shifting, and it works in the natural way. So we'll keep this curve. We can have f of x minus 3. This minus three in parentheses takes the blue curve, pushes it right, three units. Then we can have plus one out here, and that's a, that adds a vertical shift. So this takes the blue curve, and it shifts it three units to the right, and one unit up. So we can combine vertical and horizontal shifting in the natural way. Just do them one unit at a time. I framed this in terms of first moving right and then moving up, but I could just as easily think of it we get a different color from blue as first moving one unit up, then going three units to the right. We end up at the same end location, whichever way we think of it. That's vertical and horizontal shifting. Um, Vertical and horizontal shifting, to reiterate, don't change the overall shape of the graph. They just change where the curve is sitting on the Cartesian plane. This is in contrast. To this last thing I said we needed to cover today, which is taking the function and multiplying it by a constant. So taking the function 
and multiplying it by k. What this does depends on the k. So let's look at this in sort of stages. Let's look at values of k greater than 1. For k greater than 1, this is called vertical stretching. So we have the x-axis, and we have a curve. What multiplying by k is going to do is it's going to grab the part of the curve that's above the axis, and it's going to grab the part of the curve that's below the axis, and it's going to pull the curve apart. It's going to stretch it like taffy, hence the name. This is going to go up this is going to go down. To illustrate this, that's, well, we'll once again create this curve. Let's replace this with something that's sometimes above and sometimes below the axis. Let's see, f of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus, plus 0.5. There we go. For illustrative purposes, we've got a curve that's got these little bumps above the axis, this little bump up below the axis, and let's see what happens if we take this curve and multiply it by 2. Well, just what I said should happen. This bump got stretched up. This bump got stretched down. And it's less noticeable for the rest of the curve, but above the axis, this red curve got stretched up to the green, and below the axis, this red curve got stretched down to the green. A little more specifically, this point at 0 0.5 got pulled up to 0 0.1. Well, it's hardly a coincidence that 1 is twice 0.5, and that 2 appears there. This 2 controls how stretched the curve will be. Let's replace this 2 if, sorry, Desmos is being, or maybe the keyboard is being weird on me. There we go. Let's add a slider. At the moment, we're keeping k positive. In fact, we're keeping k greater than 1. Come on. Sorry, have to fight this a little. There we go. So k is controlling how stretched the curve gets. The bigger K is, the more stretched out the curve gets. We say that in a kind of formal sense by saying that we stretch the curve by a factor of K. So, what if k were less than 1? 
but still were positive. So k is now between 0 and 1. Then the stretching becomes compression. So we've got our x-axis, and we've got our curve, and we grab the curve above and below the x-axis, but now we smush the curve together. So that is going to be pushed down, that is going to be pushed We can keep with this example. Let me just modify this so that k is going between 0 and 1. So here k is 1. And now it's sort of the opposite in that the smaller k gets, the bigger the compression is. So, as I say, sort of the opposite of stretching, with stretching the bigger k is, the more it was stretched. Here the smaller k is, the more it's compressed. One very natural question remains, motivated by that inequality. What happens if I let k be less than zero? Well, it stretches or compresses the curve, but then it causes the curve to flip over the axis. And as with so much, a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's take this and let's now let k go between negative one and zero. So because k is between 0 and 1, this is on earth is this, oh, right, right, here we are. It was just a little hard to sort of see at first. But, you know, so here's k equals negative 0.6. So you see what happened. First, this red piece was smushed towards the axis. Then it was flipped over the axis to get down there. First, this red piece was smushed towards the axis. Then it was flipped over the axis to get there. So it's a vertical com a vertical compression as normal, but at the end of the compression, we take the curve and we flip it over the axis. And this is also true for like stretching. Here is negative two times f of x. So 2 is stretching, so this gets stretched up 
but then it gets flipped over the axis. This gets stretched down, but then it gets flipped over the axis. So it's regular stretching or compression with that flipping over the axis step at the end. You might anticipate, I mean, some sort of from the pattern of the lecture, we do vertical shift, horizontal shift, vertical stretch, but horizontal stretching doesn't show up enough in application that I want to talk about it. Instead, we'll simply give out the group work. 